Hello, it's early March and I haven't made a video for a while, so I thought I'd do a short newsy update explaining where I disappeared to and some of the things that I've been doing and um, what's happening in the garden. Today I've spent most of the day so far in Carmarthen at CD Saturday, which is also an eco fair. It was really good fun. Lots of different stalls. It was great for meeting other growers and people interested in the environment. And I was one of the speakers there. They had all different kinds of talks all day. And I did mine with Hugh Richards. We did a gardening Q&A. And I also bought this from one of the stalls, which reconditions old tools and sells them to raise money for a charity. So this beautiful pitchfork absolutely love it. I actually like it so much I don't really want to use it. I quite fancy just popping it in the house as an ornament but it's going to be used in the garden with compost and um, work like that so I'm absolutely delighted with this. So sorry for not making a video for a while. I've had a few messages about it and those of you that follow me on Instagram will know it's because I went to Thailand for a month, which was such a treat. I've never actually been abroad for that long before. I think the longest ever before was three weeks and I went for just over four weeks. And um, my dad lives in Thailand, in northern Thailand, near Chiang Mai, and he turned 80 towards the end of last year. So it was a great opportunity to go out, see him, spend some time there. And of course, it's super sunny in Thailand. So I had a fantastic time relaxing by the pool and swimming and eating tropical food and amazing Thai food and uh, just loving the warmth and the sunshine. Uh, I visited some excellent gardens too. I'm planning to do like a little documentary video about those uh, when I can and um, swam in the sea. It just was lovely. I have been working really flat out as I think some of you will know from when I moved here uh, almost two years ago. So having this break was just absolutely what I needed. It was lovely. My boys were back here at the homestead, uh, basically looking after the house. That time of year there wasn't so much to do in the garden. But when I got back, I did notice that the Rose Bay Willow Herb had seized the opportunity to germinate and grow. They're still very small weeds, but they're quite difficult. You can't hoe them off. Uh, they need troweling out so as and when I can I've been working down a bed getting the rose bay willow herb out because before I know it it'll be like four feet high. I love rose bay willow herb it's an amazing plant really good for wildlife but I don't want it all over my veg beds um, it's in the wild areas it can flourish there uh, that's why I end up with it in my veg beds because the seed spreads like mad and I'm delighted by the polytunnel. Now, I lost my lettuce during the really, really cold weather we had in December and also quite a lot of the outdoor brassicas. I've noticed things like rosemary, which is established, has been really hit hard. Some of it, I don't know if it's going to survive. My little bay tree as well, there's a small amount of green, but the rest of it looks terrible. And this happened across the UK, really. Lots of people realise that they've lost plants that usually completely survive the winter time. And it was that extended period of deeply cold weather that did them in. But I do have some brassicas that survived. And in here, I've got plenty of different kinds of greens for cooking with and also using as salad. Most of them are multi-purpose and there's garlic thriving in here and the garlic outside and most of the broad beans outside are looking good too. I had to do some weeding in the polytunnel too and some hoeing, in particular the paths. The damp weather here had made the paths and different areas of the ground just a little bit mossy. So the hoe 
cleared that up and you'll notice that the polytunnel is filthy. So a job I need to do over the next few weeks is scrub with a soft brush and water the polytunnel grime off. Back in the day um, I've done the tying two sheets together to clean the polytunnel thing but that really is a two-person job and it's so flipping cold I don't fancy getting that wet either. Every time I do that I would just end up soaked. So I'm going to try water and a soft brush on this polytunnel and I'll be cleaning inside as well to get it all shiny and bright before um, the summer crops go in during April and May. The spaces in here will be ever so useful for popping in some of the plants that I've been sowing in the greenhouse. Pretty much the day after I got back I sowed aubergines, chilies and sweet peppers into the greenhouse and they're on heat mats. They germinated, I've pricked them out. The greenhouse needed tidying up before I could do any sowing because it did look a bit like a dumping ground. Uh, that's just winter, you know, you're like, oh I'll pop this in here to keep it safe from the weather and time passes. So I tidied that up, got everything ready and I've also been sowing um, lettuce, different brassicas, um, peas and module radishes in the greenhouse too. I'm planning to put the very first early potatoes in sacks in the polytunnel fairly soon but I am going to wait because the next week at least looks really really cold and because of that I am delighted that I've not sown anything outside and that nothing is ready to be planted outside because even with fleece I think it's going to be pretty frozen here. Some of the night temperatures um, that are forecast are, are looking fairly grim. Not as cold as last time, hopefully, and we may get snow, which will be lovely. Um, I did sow some extra broad beans into modules to fill in the gaps, and they're still in the greenhouse, safe from the weather. I'll put them out when they're about this big. So as well as getting the first lot of sowing done, and some weeding and hoeing and general tidying up. I've been planning what needs to go where and what I need to prioritise over the month of March. All of the rest of my sewing I'm putting on hold until after this cold spell. It's, um, you know, there are things that could be sewn now. But at this time of year, daylight is increasing a little bit every single day, which really helps things to grow and they'll all be fine waiting until the middle of the month. Also I had a very exciting delivery of um, some fruit trees and some fruit bushes and a rhubarb, that I, a variety that I don't have here yet. These I've healed it in in the polytunnel ready for this cold spell to go by when I'll plant them out. They hopefully the temperatures will be cool enough that it won't trigger any growth in them and this will just keep them safe until they're going out to their permanent homes. I have an exciting project though with some of the fruit trees for the polytunnel and I'll tell you all about that when they go in. It's really exciting thinking about the growing season ahead and what's going to go where. Um, an advantage of the weather still being cold is I've got that little bit of like gentle pace because things are not racing ahead. So that's um, that's one bonus. Since I got back from Thailand, when I got back, I had terrible jet lag. I think it was actually the shock. <laughs> Not just the fact I didn't really sleep much for two days with all the travelling, but going from those amazing temperatures to freezing to death and my house was like an ice cube in comparison with being in the tropics. Um, so I felt like a complete zombie for a, about a week and then went to London for the garden press event which is a highlight of the year for many of us garden writers and people who work in garden media because um, it's an opportunity to see people often you don't meet up with at all uh, just communicating via social media 
and it's a good opportunity to see what different kinds of peat-free composts are available, to chat with brands about new innovations, different kinds of things to help in the garden. So I've got a few of those to try out um, over the spring and summer here. Also, I'm getting things ready for the first of my garden courses, which is towards the end of the month. I'm running several garden courses from here, uh, quite small groups. The first two, March and April, have sold out, but there are some other dates online. And it's all about growing your own year round affordably and lots of tips for growing and setting up a homestead, whatever size place that you have. Um, that will be great. I've done some workshops since I got back um, at other places. I really enjoy doing this kind of thing because it's a great opportunity not only to share what I've learned over the decades that I've been growing, but also by talking with other people, it's wonderful how much we can all learn from each other because no matter how long you've been growing, you just don't know everything, do you? So um, it's a great opportunity to discover more things and find out ideas from others and experiences they've had with different things. It's always a great pleasure, I think, chatting with people who are keen on growing their own and being outside and being in nature. One of the big highlights since I got back, which actually I noticed as I was driving through Wales, once I got off the motorway and was back in Wales properly, lambs. We've got lambs all over the place. It's great. So when I got home, I could hear the mother ewes go, ma, and then you've got these tiny little meh. And it starts off with just a few lambs and it's all very cute. And then they start to appear everywhere and then the lambs start forming lamb gangs and boinging by. It's an endless source of amusement. At the moment, there's no lambs in the field around me. I'm very much looking forward to those being brought here. They're in the fields opposite, though, um, so I can watch them from my desk. It's a bit distracting. I'm trying to write and there's lambs shooting by. So with the weather being cold coming up, uh, the main jobs for the next week are going to be things like mulching. I've got some beautiful wood chip that's been stacked now for almost two years. So on the top, it's still wood chippy, but underneath it's quite composty. So I'm going to be making use of that. Some of the homemade compost that I've got, um, making some more beds using different kinds of mulches and sorting out our... Um, new shed that I had built for the courses, which is like an outdoor kitchen as well. My sons took it over when I was away, put a hammock up, you know, and they've called it um, their barn. So, so I've got to make it more of a workspace now that um, I'm back. And, they, and uh, one of my jobs for now is going to be getting some horticultural fleece from the shed ready so that even though I've got heat mats in my greenhouse, I'm going to cover plants next week when the temperatures start falling at night just to give them that extra protection because they're so young from the really cold weather. I look forward to making more videos now that I feel properly back in Wales. <laughs>